What's up everyone, this is Frank from Marsman Gaming, and today we are reviewing Lords of the Fallen. Lords of the Fallen is a new Souls-like fantasy action RPG to step into the ring in a crowded field of other Souls-like titles we've seen this year. I'm not going to lie, I was very excited after seeing the previews for this game. I have been a growing fan of From Software games and Souls-like games over the years. Maybe it's the fun combat, the immersive worlds, or maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment. I've also reviewed quite a few of the other Souls-like games like Lies of P, Remnant 2, 2, Wolong Fallen Dynasty, and enjoyed my experience with them. But the more I saw of Lords of the Fallen, the more I started to feel like this could be a true spiritual relative to Dark Souls, while the others were more closely resembled to Bloodborne and Sekiro. So without hesitation, I purchased a copy of the game for the Xbox Series X and was ready to explore this world of the living and dead as a Dark Crusader. But questions arose, is Lords of the Fallen a true Souls-like experience? Does it separate itself from the rest of the Souls-like crowd? In this review, I give the good, the bad, and answer these questions in my final verdict. But before we continue with the review, if you like this kind of content which includes reviews, previews, opinion pieces, and streams for a variety of games, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for future content. And now back to the review. First, let's dive into the good. Now before I go into some of the aspects I really feel separated Lords of the Fallen from the rest, I have to address what I feel is two of the most important aspects of what makes a game a Souls-like game, and that's combat and bosses. Combat out of this game is strong. It's not as smooth and quick as Elden Ring or Sekiro, but it definitely feels faster and less stocky than Lies of P, which is not a diss. If I were to compare it to something, I feel like it closely resembles that of Dark Souls 3, both in the movement and field of swordplay, and both the dodging and parrying function well. Now onto the bosses. There are 30 total bosses, including a few optional ones, and a majority of them have uniqueness to them and the environment and provide quite a bit of difficulty. A bunch of them are quite memorable, while some not so much. I won't spoil too much with the clips that I show and will keep it to early fights, but in the end, they meet the Souls-like threshold in my opinion. One of the aspects to the game that really separates itself from the rest of the crowd is the game mechanic of dual worlds. In this game, you traverse between the world of the living, which is called Axiom, and the world of the dead, which is called Umbreal. You are given the use of an Umbreal lamp that allows you to traverse through the different worlds. These two worlds are distinct, and the landscape of the world changes jumping from one world to the next. You need to use this lamp to progress through the level, solve puzzles, and the two worlds even have distinct enemies, bosses, and items. Even when you die in the land of the living, you get sent to the umbral world and given extra life. This umbral world makes a dark world feel even darker and really entices you to want to explore both worlds. But I warn you from experience, in the umbral world makes you a target for brutal enemies that will hunt you if you stay too long. This mechanism or feature is not just a gimmick, but a core function of the game that is unique and done pretty well. I give kudos for the devs for thinking outside the box. The next aspect of the game that I believe separates itself is the customization. When you play a Souls-like game, you want the ability to mold your character into whatever look or build you want and play to a certain style that fits you. Lords of the Fallen does this well. It gives you some strong character designs, multiple classes to choose from, 80 different armor sets you can obtain in the game. You also get the ability to change the color or tint of your outfits, and over 200 weapons and 12 spells that you can use to kick some demon ass. This along with the ability to level up stats and buff weapons gives the players some strong customization and variability in your playthrough from one player to the next. They also have a photo mode, so if you want to have a photo shoot and take some badass photos, make sure to do it. Join our crew and show me some of your best looks. The last aspect I want to acknowledge is the co-op system. I am a fan of single player experiences, but getting a chance to play with friends or family members in games like Elden Ring, Remnant 2, Wolong, and now Lords of the Fallen brings an extra level of excitement and enjoyment. Lords of the Fallen does co-op pretty well. It's easy to invite friends, your friends can level up with you defeating enemies, they can get items, and you can enjoy the pain of being sworn by enemies and fighting large-scale bosses. I also like the option that you can revive your partner if he falls, and if you both die, you both go back to the checkpoint and don't have to be resummoned. There are some bugs, but overall an enjoyable experience. To be fair though, co-op at times can make the game seem pretty easy, especially for experienced players. With the good, we have to talk about the bad. And without question, the biggest issue with this game, the Achilles heel to this title, the straw that broke this Dark Crusader's back is the poor performance and graphics of this game. I lump both of these together because they both play off each other and compound the issues. As I stated earlier in the review, I reviewed this game on my Xbox Series X, and boy, does it have issues. I spoke about my excitement for this game early, but 
As we started to get closer to release, we heard rumors of potential performance problems, especially on the console. But I am a big console player, so I wasn't going to let a couple of frame drops steer me away. And then we saw this, a day before release, and now I was sweating. Unfortunately, the rumors were true, and I haven't seen a performance and graphical issues like this in a next-gen game since Redfall and Jedi Survivor. Mind you, my playthrough included the day one patch, and the next patch that occurred the following day. In my experience, the game had major frame drops, at times screen tearing, lag, textures having difficulty rendering, and graphics that look a decade old. I am not one of those gamers that need graphics to be top notch for me to enjoy a game. Gameplay and narratives and story mean way more to me than graphics, but with poor performance combined with graphics that look like from 2014 was pretty damn immersion breaking. And the farther you go into the game, the uglier it seemed to get. This game is worth $70, and more than that for the deluxe edition. Now the PC version I hear has better performance, not by much, but the PS5 and Xbox X console performance at launch is pretty unacceptable and needs to be called out. The second bad aspect I want to address is enemy density. In this game, you are hit with waves and waves of enemies, especially in the Umbral world. Unfortunately, this game doesn't give you much room to breathe, and because of this, it doesn't entice you to explore because you're constantly in danger of losing your vigor. Also, what the hell is wrong with almost every enemy having firebombs? Without question, it is better to have a higher density of enemies than a barren world. But with the constant barrage of enemies, the fear of losing your vigor, it really doesn't entice you to do some extra exploring and could lead to some valuable items, bosses, and extra lore being missed. I wish we could find a happier medium with the density of enemies. I know I have tried to avoid spoilers as much as possible, but please don't run past the blacksmith before the mistress of the hounds boss. You need her to level up weapons, and with the density of enemies, some of you might say screw it and try to run by, but please don't. The final bad I want to address is the PvP mode. Now I am not a huge PvP guy in these type of games, but I understand it to be an enjoyable and important aspect in Souls-like games. Unfortunately for me, this aspect wasn't enjoyable. It is a simple method to invade others, which is good, and try to ruin their day, but the more you play it, the more flaws you see. Newcomers can really get thrashed by more experienced players, especially with vastly different levels, and there has been a lot of connection issues with the PvP mode. In a game where every hit counts and avoiding strikes is pivotal, connection issues can cause deaths that don't make sense and feels tainted. Now by the time you see this video, more patches may be on the way and could fix some of the connection issues, but I wanted to give you my perspective and experience. Overall, Lords of the Fallen has positives and negatives. I really enjoyed the ability to traverse the land of the living and the dead, and the level design was cool and unique. The game gives you a lot of options for customization, and the ability to play co-op with strong combat and bosses is enticing. However, this game's performance on console is immersion breaking, and unacceptable. The enemy density is unforgiving and entices you not to explore the cool world the game built. I think this game gives you a true Souls-like experience and feels like a relative of Dark Souls, where the bones and foundation are strong. I really wanted to love this game, but I couldn't get over the poor performance and immersion-breaking moments. I am giving Lords of the Fallen a 7 out of 10. This game feels like it will get better over time with additional patches and I think has a higher ceiling than Lies of P. Remnant 2, and Wolong Fallen Dynasty, but the execution at launch is the worst out of the bunch. Does Lords of the Fallen separate itself from the rest of the other 2023 Souls-like games? It sure does, for both the right and wrong reasons. Thank you everyone for watching. Make sure if you like this kind of content to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. Until next time, this is Frank from Marsman Gaming signing off. See ya.